Hello, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the firewall, where Monday and Tuesday are our topics, Wednesday's our discussion, Thursday's the Ask Us His P, Friday is everything else, right? This is that episode, the movies, books, games, things that are generally not cybersecurity related, right? Like, so this is this is that time now, you know what I mean? We get to, we get to cut loose a little bit, you know what I mean? But um, as you can see, Ryan is not here. He's out enjoying himself, taking a little little uh, staycation. Really, he didn't go too far, but he's out there enjoying himself. He'll he'll be back next week to tell us about it and how much fun it was. Hopefully, right with everything that's going on. But with us, to, with with you today, right? You got myself, Shannon Times, and you got Daniel Acevedo. How's it going, guys? Uh, today is unofficial mascot. Is this little guy? My daughter didn't want. She didn't want this one, so it's a little finger. So he's the mascot <laughs> for today's episode. Uh, is that a cool? Is that a cool? Yeah, cool? Yeah, I don't want the koala. Okay. No, it's cool. Sorry. It's <laughs> by the koala today. That's what we're yeah. doing. And we also got Chris Abacon. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right, everybody. So look, yeah, that is kind of cute, right? Like it's like, oh, see this. They they get older, Daniel. That's what happens, man. They're like, I want this. I don't want that. Like you used to want everything. Anything that came from yeah. me was gold. Was gold to you? You know. Do it like that. I heard it. Because it's like, it's like a bag? Yeah, it's like a bath bomb. So like on the bag of the bath bomb, on the back, it shows you which animals you can get. And the lunch she didn't want was a koala. And when the bath bomb dissolved and the koala came out, she was like, not having it. She's like, I don't want it. Take it away. I'll take the koala. I'm sorry. But like, I saw what you saw. It was a selection. Like, I don't know what's in yeah. here, right? Before I leave the video, like, you it's your fault. I don't like the koala. It's over. Like, yeah. like, you brought this to me, so it is on you <laughs> to fix this. She's like, yeah, she's, like, she's, like, she's like, different bath bomb. Now, put it in there. <laughs> now you got to buy an x-ray machine to see what the shape of the bath bomb is. For the, what's, what's the one for, for pregnancies? What do you call that? The the sonogram? You got to buy a sonogram? Yes, you know yes, I yeah. <laughs> sonogram. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, this, this is crazy. But, hey, so, so we're going to talk about our weeks, right? So, like, for me, didn't really do too much this week. Um, started watching a couple of things. Started re-watching Modern Family. I don't know if you guys ever watched Modern Family, mm-hmm. but, like, I got a little bit into it. And then, you know, I usually watch it when my wife is around. So she came down to hang out with me a little bit. And I was like, all right, let's watch the Modern Family. And, like, that show is still funny, man. Like, it's still, it still carries today. Like, Phil is Phil is wild on there, man. So it's like, how can you be <laughs> these Like, if you've never watched the show, it's just like, man, you are you are something else, man. Like, how did, how did Claire marry you? You know what I mean? But again, it's fictional, right? But it's like you yeah, you're yeah. a great you're a great actor because I believe you're an idiot. You know what I mean? So like <laughs> it's crazy. You are a Ty Ty Burrell is the guy's name. You're you're a great actor, man. But watched a little bit of that. I started watching, I didn't get all the way through it, but um I'm a sports guy, right? So there was this uh sports center does these uh different exposés every so often. Mm-hmm. And there's this one there's this one called Were Wolf, like W H E R E Wolf. So have you guys ever seen the uh what what is the chief aholic like it's the guy that used to dress up in the uh in the uh the wolf costume and then he would have like kansas city chiefs gear on and whatnot he was like a super oh. fan right yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that guy a couple of years ago was arrested for bank robbery i don't know if you guys ever saw the story interesting yes because yes, like this guy this guy was everywhere he was he was going to away games you know what i mean he was going to the away games he's going to home games he was at the super bowl so like everybody thought okay this must be like a trust fund baby or something to have money like this to mm-hmm. be going to these games yeah, yeah to be buying these tickets especially for especially when it's the chiefs who have been winning super bowls consistently like those mm-hmm. tickets are cheap like even if they go even if they go to a terrible team stadium like that that, that terrible team that's hosting it's like all right it's time to get our money now right like you want to come see the super bowl champs you're going to pay for it you know your your nosebleeds are going to be 300 dollars now right to see yeah. the chiefs play to see them beat up on us and beat us by 30 you know what i mean so <laughs> But this guy was everywhere, and it turns out he was he was he was a, a gambling addict, right? That uh, was that was that was robbing. He ro- he robbed at least one bank. Like I haven't gotten far enough to see if he's been doing it for like years or whatnot, because the guy didn't have he didn't have a job that paid more than like fourteen dollars an hour or something like that. I think mm. he was working working in the Amazon warehouse or something like that. But he was yeah, it was wild. I was like, oh, I've got I've got to finish this right. Like something came up, and I was like, <laughs> that's right, dedication to your team, man. Yes, yes, <laughs> like, man. 
I'm gonna spend my entire paycheck on this t- chief yeah. tax, right? Like, yeah. holy mm-hmm. moly. Well, when he ran out of money, he was, he was robbing banks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. robbing banks. Yeah, gotta get it. But yeah, they caught him. Like he was, he was not sophisticated in his bank robbery. Like he, he left the bank on a bike. Like he was, he was bike riding. He was bike riding to his car when the police came up on, came up on him. You know what I mean? So like that guy wasn't a genius. But I, I, I want to finish it off because it's like an hour long uh, thing, and I only got like halfway through. But I was like, this is crazy. And I remembered the story. Like the story when it came out, I was like, I do somewhat remember this. But yeah, it's called Werewolf, is what it's called. But. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I'll, I'll probably I'll probably give the recap on that next week when I finish it up to be like, oh man, this is crazy. You know what I mean? Or maybe I won't be here next week because we play the Bills, and if, if they blow us out like they've been doing, people, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm calling in sick. I'm telling you now, Ryan. When you see this, when you go to produce this episode, I'm calling in sick if y'all beat us and treat us terribly tonight, right? So we'll see. I also started watching uh, this show called High Potential on TV, and it's got a. You guys ever watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? You ever seen that show? So Sweet D, uh, the girl who plays Sweet D, Caitlin Olsen, (laughs) she's this she's this woman that's got like a crazy high IQ, but she's recently divorced or separating one of the two, and uh, she's got these three children at home. But she was a a janitor for this police station, and she saw something on the board one night, and like brought something out to like kind of solve it. And I was like, oh okay, I see. This is like a detective show, you know what I mean? But she's a comedian, so there's some comedic aspects to it right it's decent i've seen the first two episodes and i'm like okay that's not bad the other one i watched that's a new one is called dr odyssey and that one i was like okay this is going to be like house on the ocean is what i was thinking which it kind of is but then it went into some other stuff that i'm like me and my wife were watching it and she was just like you've lost interest already haven't you i was like yes i have they go into this they go into this whole love story thing i'm like look man like i I want house i want house on a cruise ship that's what i want yeah that's actually you know what's funny? That was playing randomly yesterday on a TV, and I'm like, "What is this show?" Because um, we got family just c- came back from a cruise, right? And so all okay. the, like we're watching news, and then uh, Doctor Odyssey for some reason was on a TV. I'm like, "What is this? This is super cool. This this boat's dope. You got this doctors yeah. team, like." And I just remember them like, "We're not a surgery. We're not a, uh, we're not a um, you know level five hospital that can handle this." Blah blah blah. blah. I'm like. That's actually kind of a cool concept. I want to see, hey, yeah. they're out in the Bahamas and somebody gets some kind of disease or, and then they yeah. figure out it's lupus or something like freaking mm. House did. It is a very interesting concept. And you're right, man. Like yeah. the, ship, the ship was awesome. Like they were walking through doors that were like automatic doors that like swung out. You know what I mean? Like they didn't yeah. have to push the door or anything. I was like, I was like, man, and like the, the, the Get me dining on that room cruise. area. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it'll cost you though. Like this yeah. is like one of those places where it's like it's probably like ten thousand dollars a person or something like that, you know, something yeah. crazy. But no, it, it it is a very cool concept, but they they got to delve into the romantic aspect of it, where you know the new doctor, you know, and one of yeah. the nurses that are on there, and I'm like, I don't care about this, man. Like, you know I don't know what mean? Like, yeah, I don't this know. happened to a good old just give me yeah, yeah, like, the go shots, give me all the yeah, all the diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah, I think the right way to do like romance is like tension, just like a little bit, a little bit of quirk hits and you know little things there, right? Like with house and however that was done, right? But like it shouldn't just go into like a full blown. Oh yeah, we should be dating and you know blah blah. Like I don't know, I don't like that. No, it's gotta, it's gotta build up, right? Yeah, I, that, that's and even then when it builds up, I'm like, hey, can we only spend like five minutes on this? Like I don't, I don't yeah. need this because. <laughs> Because like it was, it was, it was kind of a jerk move. I'm not gonna spoil it, but it was kind of a jerk move. So like he's he's getting he's getting affectionate with one of the people on the ship, but it's somebody that somebody else already told him he had feelings. They had feelings for her. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like right in front of the other guy, he's just like being a jerk. I'm like, oh, that's a jerk move. You know what I mean? But that part I kind of was like, all right, with but you know, it's it's what it is. <laughs> Um, I also watched the first episode of The Penguin on Max. So have you guys seen this? Mm-hmm. Like, it's off from that's that the, uh, yeah, yeah, it's I've been off yeah, my buddy watched these. I think it's, uh, I love it. He didn't watch the Batman movie yet because he liked it so much. So here's the thing. I wasn't that big a fan of the last Batman movie because it was so long and it was really like in my memory because I've only seen it one time, only four fight scenes. Like I realize this is like Batman year one, right? Like this is the fresh Batman, but like yeah. I only have four fighting scenes there. Like I don't, you know what I mean? Like show me some good detective work or something, you know, to, to yeah. get me out of that. But, and this picks up like right where it left off with the movie, like right after. Yeah. Like, so I'm not giving out any spoilers. The movie's been out this long. If you haven't seen it, I know, it's, now, like, it's whatever. But like, like the Riddler flooded Gotham. 
right? Like he had let these bombs off and let Gotham flood. And it's right from there. They're talking about it, you know, and like, you know, mm. there's all this crime going on and this, that, and the third. And then the Penguin, like the Falcone family, which we know about the Falcones, right? Mm. They've been in Batman mm-hmm. lore forever. Um, yep. Uh, the, they have to come to power, you know what I mean? So it was, it was, I'm going to give it another shot, right? Like I usually give episodes three tries before I'm like, all right, I'm not, yeah. I'm not messing with you anymore. But the first one I was like, uh, I realized you got to set it up a little bit, but it, it was kind of crazy. Right. So um, <laughs> it was interesting. It is dark, right? Like just the stuff that yeah. they, they deal with. And DC's always been darker than, than Marvel, right? When it comes to what they do, right? It's always been a dark comic book. I don't want to call it a series, but like, like that, that, company has always been dark when it comes to their comic Mm -hmm. right Um, you know parents are somebody's parents are always dying you know what i mean so it's like whatever it may be but those were pretty much the things those are pretty much the things i did this week what about you chris i know you had a a, a fairly adventurous week this week chris yeah so this week not a lot of media consumption if anything most (laughs) of the media consumption was watching the news for the hurricane and things that were happening here in the tampa bay area right so there was a lot, of, a lot of question if it was going to hit directly, if it was going north. I just kind of had a feeling that Panhandle was going to get it again, and that was that's what happened. But anyway, the, earlier this week, I actually headed out to a conference in Huntsville, Alabama, called the National Cyber Summit. Right, National Cyber Summit is like a congregation of you know, like a lot of government, a lot, a lot of cybersecurity companies, and then the expo, and they've got speakers and stuff like that. So we get there on, I get there on Tuesday which I happen to be very uneventful because we didn't under, we were thinking the expo was going to be open on Tuesday, but it turns out that's where they're open. They have like an opening night of the expo where they, it started like five o'clock, but they had events for like teaching and, you know, paid classes. And that's what we didn't attend that. But anyway, that that's the only day that I was able to attend because of the the hurricane. Right. So I had to fly back Wednesday, the next day, which is actually having to be the speaking events where, where all the stuff was happening. And that's, yeah. that's what we, uh, that's what we're trying to go to. But again, the team went out and saw that. So that was, that was great, but I wasn't able to nice. attend, unfortunately. Um, but I mean, really, I spent a lot of time at the airport really in uncertainty on, on Wednesday because yeah, the storm was headed to uh, Florida at that point in time, because it was really yeah. fast traveling Atlanta where uh, I was flying to uh, as a as a connecting flight. They actually had to shut down for an hour because of lightning and things like that in the afternoon. So I was stuck in Huntsville for a good three or four hours. And of course, I was afraid that I wasn't going to make the flights in Atlanta. But lo and behold, right, everybody was canceled, right? So you've got like one, you know, you've got a one hour outage, basically. Next thing you know, it's just, it, it cascades into delays throughout the entire, yeah. you know, it's just, it's just crazy. But yeah, you know, eight, nine hours later, I get home, you know, 9, 9 p.m., right? Which could, it should have only been like four or five hours. It ended up being, you know, an extra five, extra eight. But, you know, we, we, uh, the next day was when the, the hurricane was supposed to arrive, you know, and then that entire day was just like, I'm trying to work and then I'm watching the news. It's just like, you know, when you, when you have something like that happening, you just, you're just extremely distracted. Yeah. Right? And it's just like, it's, hey, you got to make sure, hey, do we have to evacuate? Is the evacuation order going to mm-hmm. come up for us? So that was kind of my Thursday. And then Friday was kind of just like the recovery period, right? Like, luckily it didn't hit us directly. Um, but a lot of areas here in, in the St. Petersburg area where I live were flooded, right? Especially if you're on the barrier islands oh, wow. and at sea level, like a lot of people lost everything. So it's, it's really sad to see. Yeah. Um, it's rough. But specifically in my region, the north north northeast region, the water sewage plant actually shut down. So we got an email and just notices, hey, you guys can't shower or you guys can't use your water uh, for you know approximately forty hours. So we're like, oh gosh. So that was yeah. like that was Friday morning, and then we're like, okay. So luckily, I do work remote, and it's okay. I, we had to go to a family member's house to continue working because like, hey. I need to be able to use the bathroom, right? I need to be yeah, able to use the shower cool. and wash my hands. Like, it's, it's, it's how just... was that travel? How was that travel? Because you did that Friday morning, like it, it was like on you at that point, right? Like, no, uh, luckily the, the storm was fat. Friday morning. It was already in Tennessee and North Carolina. Really? Okay, right? Really? Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, it was booking <laughs> it, but like it landed. I would say, I think it landed Friday night, a uh, Thursday night, and it's made its way past Atlanta, uh, past Georgia, past Alabama, past Tennessee and North Carolina region, like kind of that, that state area, it was already there on Friday. 
But if you watch the if you watch the news recently, like North Carolina, like Asheville, I mean, devastating floods, right? Dang. And you know, and I, I was thinking about this, like, there's not a lot of coverage of this on TV right now. Like, no, what, like what, what's crazy is like, yeah, it's an election year, but hey, man, like this is this is our this is our American, you know, these are our brothers and sisters, like this is our fellow Americans, and like there's n- nobody in the national news is covering. People are losing everything, right? So it's yeah. just really interesting and just weird. I don't know. It just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Like people are more focused on about the election than you know protecting at least the news is and protecting and you know giving giving awareness to people that are you know losing their livelihoods and their lives. Right. So it's yeah, I mean, a little bit sad on that end. You know what's weird? You know what's weird about that? Like I I didn't take notice of that because I was getting a lot of so like I have the Weather Channel app on my yeah. phone and that's was popping up constantly with yeah, floods yeah, yeah. here and this many people dead and this that, and the third. So I was of the assumption that it was international news because I kept seeing it pop up on the app and yeah. I would watch these videos and see what's going on. And I'm like, whoa, like see it. Some of the videos of like these, these waves were like crashing on, on rooftops. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The flooding was yeah. so, so high. Yeah. And I was, I, I did not, I just assumed it was everywhere, and I just—I mm-hmm. guess I haven't been in the news like I thought it would. And that is—that's a little disheartening, you know what I mean? It is. Yeah. I, I honestly think it is because it's an election year. Like everything's focused on the election, blah blah blah. Yeah. So, like, it's—it's it's a little bit. It, like to me, it's a little bit. You know, it goes to show you where their priorities are, and it's—it's it's just like kind of unfortunate. But you know, from the media end, you know, we, we are recording on Sunday, right? Football. Football was interesting yesterday, and you know, congrats, Penn State! You guys beat the Illini. That was I kind of I saw that one coming. I mean, it was close at first. It was shaky at first, right? But um, you know, it's weird with like Big Ten and SEC being so huge now. It's like I mean, again, we're not there yet. We're a lot of the intra-conferential games. I'm just like rooting for Big Ten all the way. Like, dude, just beat SEC. I'm I'm done with them. I'm sick of seeing them on on freaking prime time. I'm like, is there any way for Georgia and Florida or and Alabama to lose at the same time? Which was actually a decent game at the at the end. But like, I'm yeah. like I hope they both lose. Yeah, because uh, Minnesota put up a good fight, man. Yeah, and that's good against Michigan. And I, yeah. I wasn't expecting. I thought we were gonna get blown yeah. out, right? And but you know, I think we did. We were behind in the in the first half, but the second half, I saw some again. Like Minnesota's never been really like like a super contender in college football. Like Minnesota has, has always been like a hockey and wrestling state right like hockey wrestling minnesota is up there but you know the fact that they put up a fight with against one of the best teams in the country you know good stuff right i think it's good or michigan's overrated you know <laughs> like there could be that they could be overrated right so and here's, and here's, the, here's the thing I don't, I don't think that's the case right michigan lost a lot of talent like that happens right whenever you win a national yeah. championship people that are eligible to go are gonna go and like michigan michigan lost like 12 of their starters from last year from both sides of the ball you know what mm-hmm. i mean so it's one of those things where it's like they lost a lot of talent and there is some regrouping to be done right because they've already got a loss this year they lost to who did they lose to? Texas, right? Was it Texas? Mm-hmm. I think they lost to. But so Texas like, yes, yeah, killing it. Texas is killing it, man. But like, they started off slow yesterday too. So like, it's one of those That's things true. where it's like, man, like, and the SEC, like, you got some losses that are coming up there. Old Miss lost. They were ranked number six, right? So, true. Um, but yeah, man, it is an interesting college football season. And I, I got a coworker who's a, who's an Oregon fan, and he, I, I keep telling him, I was like, look, man, the Pac-12. I was like, these aren't Pac-12 defenses in the Big Ten, man. I was like, it's one of those things. I, I tell him, I was like, look, I was like, you may not think Iowa is good, but everybody who plays Iowa, like their points per game drops significantly. Like their defense is way better than what what you can give them credit for. It's just their offense usually lags behind, right? Right, but, right. But, but the Big Ten, that's just how it is, man. And I, I keep telling them, I was like, you guys are not going to be as as great as you think you are. And he's like, oh, we're going to win a national championship this time and the third. I was like, they started the season at number three, and they're down to eight, and they haven't lost yet. Like, that goes to tell you, like, you guys are struggling, you know, like, not against, not against the greatest competition, you know. It's only going to get worse for you because they have – Michigan, Ohio State. I think they have Minnesota on there this year. Yeah. Right? So like they're they're it's not gonna be as easy for y'all as I think it is, but I could be wrong exactly. like the season ain't played out yet. But no, Minnesota, like I saw that and I almost sent the message to you. I almost reached out to you, Chris, because I was like, Man, that's a heartbreaker. Because I was yeah, watching it. For I was sure. like, Ooh. That was like, a close one. That, yeah. would, that would have been awesome. Yeah, that would have been a great win. Yeah. But NFL side, it's big big one for us. It's Vikings Packers. That's the one that yeah. I care about. I mean, like it's like you know, like what's what what's your least favorite team, champ? Probably Steelers. Steelers, yes. Yeah. I respect so you, them, but I don't like. Yeah, them. yeah. Like same with me. I, I respect I respect the Packers, but like I don't like. Them. Like I hope to lose every game, right? Um, so that's my game, and that's what I'll be looking forward to today. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I mean, 
you know, Sam Darnold is playing pretty well. So, I mean, lights out really. And I'm, I'm just hoping he keeps this up for an entire season. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of been my week in a nutshell. One last thing for my flights, right? So I flew Delta. Did you guys know that Delta has trading cards? Like, they've no. got trading cards. Yeah, so, it, yeah, so, so if the, the pilots of each Delta plane, like whatever platform they fly, they carry the, like, this is a 757 card. They carry the card, uh, like, it's got like stats, like a trading card of their platform, right? So uh, I've got three. So if you ask them, as you, if you ask them uh, as you do plane, right, they'll give you a card and they're super happy. Yeah, thanks for flying Delta. But they're really, really cool and nerdy about it, right? So I've flown on the A321. And the and then the seven th- th- seven three seven right um so it's it's pretty cool I just wanted to share that with you guys but anytime you're in a Delta flight if you see the if you see the captain or the pilot be like hey sir uh, you mind giving me a trading card they will happily give you one because then it's you're like cool. oh yeah thanks for flying Delta appreciate your business Delta rewards member like I I fly Delta and, mm-hmm. and, and I never knew that. Like, yeah, I right. never knew that. And I always so, greet them on the way out because they're standing right there as you Yeah, as you and then they're going to be like, here you go, sir. Ha- thanks for flying Delta. Yeah. And they're really cool about it. Yeah. They, they might want to do a conversation. Yeah, I, I usually, like, maybe chat with them for, like, a minute. Uh, but, obviously, I just asked the guy this time because the 757, uh, if you guys don't know about the 757, right, The at least in, on Delta planes, you board and it's it's kind of, you board right in between, uh, like the so when it's in class the middle first between, class. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So usually when I do plane on a seven five seven, you never see the pilot because the pilot is, yeah, is up there, yeah, in the front, right? Yeah, as up at the front. But this time he was standing uh, right, right by the uh, the flight attendants, right? And I was like, yes, yes, finally I can get a seven five seven card because I've flown I've flown a seven five seven a million times, but I've usually the pilot's already gone, right? Or you know, because I'll, I'll be on like the economy seats right and by, by the time i get you know out of there the pilots already left right so i finally got one after flying like a 757 flight like for, for a long time right but yeah th- that's this one other thing i gotta share i want to get the international flight ones the, the a350s and the a330s those those airbus planes the airbus um, yeah but yeah. they've got like and it, this, this one's cool the, you know when they had a plane to france for the um for the olympics they had a trading card for that specific plane That's during that cool. time. So I'm like, you know, it's just little things. You know, I mean, American um, carriers, you know, they're 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 all pretty cool. But like Delta has like little touches like this that makes me want to keep flying. No, like not trying to plug cool. Delta, but I, I think it's just really really cool that you know they got little cool trading cards that I can collect. And as a nerd, yeah. it's like, yeah, I want it. That's <laughs> pretty cool. Though. You know, what's crazy is I've had, I've had a lot of people tell me, "Oh, Delta's terrible. Delta's terrible." I was like, my experience with Delta has been pretty. I've always had like, a great experience with Delta. Yeah. Same. Yeah, so I, 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 I think in this case, like obviously because of the weather, usually my experience with Delta is pretty pretty fine. But like like any airline, you want to fly in the morning because if you fly out at night, there's just more chances for delays. That plane's already flown like five seven routes, wherever they're coming from, and there's gonna be issues. Just that's, that's just how it is. But I think in general, I think the the airline they're, they're very similar, American and United. Just the little touches that I think make me want to fly Delta a little bit more. That's just it. You know, so that, but that's all I had. <laughs> so, <laughs> no worries. No, don't say I like I that's a lot. Though if I'm walking out the plane, I'm just gonna be like, give me the card. Don't be talking to me. I just want the card. Just give me the card. Yeah, they're gonna be the like, like, like thank you. <laughs> exactly. Thank, thank you for flying Delta. <laughs> thank okay. you for your business. No, if, you, if, you, if you do it like that, they're gonna be like, nah. We we know about you, Warren Buffett hater. We don't. We're out yeah. of it. <laughs> you know, we Warren know Buffett you. owns this we, like thirty percent of Delta. Yeah. We're out of it, doesn't yeah. he? <laughs> <laughs> Berkshire yeah. Hathaway. They're gonna be like Berkshire Hathaway is our biggest stock exactly. investor. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was sick last week, and I think I said on the on the pod, and it was it was like the cold that would just like would not go away. It's like one day I was okay, the next day I was like crap, like through the whole week until like literally I think five or Saturday I finally felt feel normal again. But this week I was the whole week in uh, ACAST trading. Actually, I haven't like worked with ACAST in a long time. Mm. Uh, it's one of those, you know, obviously DoD systems. That's a cybersecurity team. It was, working between them and other departments. So how to get the training. It was pretty cool. It's a long time. It's honestly been like probably eight years since I haven't used the tool. Lots changed with it. It does a lot more things now that I remember. Um, it's it's tenable. Interface. It's, yeah, it's, it's still it's tenable. tenable. Yeah. Yeah. But if, uh, if you've ever used OpenVAST or Manage Engine or any of these other like 
uh, vulnerability scanners, they're all pretty kind of similar. So mm-hmm. the GUI and the interface is all pretty, pretty much the same. So it, it was cool. It was long days. There was like a lot of labs, like a lot of labs and a lot of videos. So, you know, working from home or, or like doing training from home, and it was self-paced. I thought, oh, it'll be fast. It'll, you know, but self-paced, I'm just going to blow through it. But it was like, you know, from eight to like six. It was like very long days. Uh, but I was happy I finished that. I didn't really get a chance to do a lot of media or like gaming this week because of that. I like we finished that on Friday. Then we had to come up to Tokyo to do some uh, appointments that we had with the government here for my wife. And then uh, the weekend was great though. Like nothing special, nothing crazy, but it was like wholesome for me. Like I spent a lot of time with my my wife and my kid and my mother in law. Um, I don't know. Like it was funny. I met this guy in a Starbucks somewhere, and he's like, "Oh, your wife's Japanese and she speaks really good English." I was, "Yeah." And then uh, we were in line, so we sat at one of the communal tables. I was like, hey, you mind if I sit down with you guys? I was like, yeah, that's fine. This is a young kid. He was actually from the Netherlands. His name was Us. And I was like, well, what's your full name? He's like, Usman. And I was like, like what's, your, what's your background heritage? He's like, well, I'm actually from Morocco. When my family moved to Netherlands, and that's where I grew up. Um, he was a really, really interesting young kid. Uh, but yeah, he asked me about my life. I said, you know, we moved here to Japan. We're living here now. We have a four-year-old daughter and all that stuff. He's like, well, how do you feel? I was like, honestly, I'm super happy. And that's like, that was like kind of like the whole weekend and the whole week for me. Like we are in this place now, we're kind of like settled. We hit four months living here. Um, I usually like stress myself a lot to like do a lot of things. And right now I'm kind of like at peace. My kid's growing great. My relationship with my wife is good. We're all healthy. We're all happy. Like I don't need anything more in life. Everything else is like, lunch. so that, that's how the weekend felt. We had like great lunches. We went out. I played a bunch of my kid in the playground. We had great dinners. A couple of beers, like nothing crazy. It was just like nice. It was like very wholesome. Um, it was like a good finish to the week. Honestly, doing this pod too, wrapping it up, you know, like I can't think of anything else really. You know, it was just not sick anymore. Learned some stuff this week and had a great time with my family this weekend. So next weekend though, unfortunately I won't be on the pod. We're going to go Saturday to a Disney uh, hotel. And then we're going to go to one of the new parts of the park of Disney in Tokyo which I'm not looking forward to because we have to get there super early and stand in line just to get into the park early. <laughs> and like, I think you like the videos. It is insane. My wife sent me one on Instagram and I was like, is the park still that crazy? She's like, yes. And I'm talking about, there's like hundreds and hundreds of people that just wait for the park to open to then go to that new section of the park. And I'm like, this is literally my nightmare. This is my hell. But forget it. My kid will be happy. So, what is the theme of the new section? Like, is it like... It's like Rapunzel and Frozen and Peter Pan and Tangled. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. A little girl's, like, paradise. So, you know, she, she'll, she'll enjoy it. I think my wife enjoys it more than, than my kid. And I'm like, who are we doing this for right now? <laughs> can we just can we just wait in here where the stuff dies down a little bit? I don't have to do this. But I was like, forget it. It's fine. It's fine. It's whatever. I'll get over it. I'll have a good time. I'll be happy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, besides that, I uh, was start watching Shogun. It's on my list. You guys, you talked about HBO Max, and I remember I watched the half season of House of Dragons, and I never went back to like binge the rest of the episodes to finish it. So I'm about to go back and watch that. Yeah, man, actually, uh, actually, we we watched like the first part of Game of Thrones, right? The first season, and we just haven't gotten back to it, right? We got to, like episode six or something, but I think at some point we're gonna have to pick that stuff back up once we kind of normalize back here again. But yeah, definitely, definitely. It's an hour, uh, hour long episode, so sometimes it's hard to like. I think yeah. the day because that's the only time we can really watch it because we put our kids yeah. to sleep. It's like seven thirty or eight thirty. Like, I really want to spend like an hour watching an episode. I'm so tired, or like, so we have to pick and choose what we want to do. But Shogun, right. like, like won all those awards, and my wife now is like, oh, we should really watch it. We want to watch it when it came out a year ago. So now she's like hell bent. We're gonna like watch this. So I'm um, looking forward to it. Again, I'm sorry, Shannon. That's, that's not a Shannon show. Right. I'm curious, right? So I, I was just getting ready to go into this. Like you, you knew I was getting ready to say. So like I've heard the show is beautiful. Like like when it comes to yeah. like how they set everything up, like it's beautiful with colors. With a lot of with a lot of the movies that are Asian culture, that is always the case, right? Like they do a very mm-hmm. good job of capturing the different colors and the things and the changing yeah. and things like that. Like they do a very good job of that. But like. If I see Shogun and I see these these samurai outfits, like I want swords to come out, I need heads chopped off all the time, all the time, like, all the time, like all the time, like I like go through the rest of it. But like, I talked to somebody that watched it and they were like, "Yeah, it's a lot of you know talking and like power politicking, playing and right. politicking." Yeah, 
I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, oh. yeah, I'm like, but with those those swords probably look beautiful when they come out. Like, why don't we see more of that? You know what I mean? But like, I need, I need that in my life. You know what I mean? So yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that's that's pretty much all I've got. Uh, I think uh, just a big thank you, Ginger. They in Jap- there's a phrase in Japanese. It's called yoyu. Just means like balance, right? So just find your balance in your life. Whatever that means to you, it, it'll bring you a lot of happiness. Trust me. We, we up here bringing up Japanese philosophy and how to love live it. a better life. You know, what I mean? this is, I love this it. is the Friday episode, everybody. This is what we get into, right? Like, yes, this, is, sir. this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. Yeah. But, all right, guys. Uh, unless you guys got anything else, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead yeah. and wrap this up. You know what I mean? But yeah. Good week all around, fellas. Like, uh, like I said, everybody, don't tell Ryan. We might try to do a takeover. Don't let him know. You know what I mean? Even even though he produces the show and he'll see this when it comes up. <laughs> hey, everybody, look. Don't forget, don't forget to like, share, subscribe out there. Hit the hit the bell, the button, whatever it is, or whatever me, whatever medium you 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 are using to watch us. Make sure you subscribe to it. All right, get it up. So. Hit up all the social media platforms. They go by the podcast name. So it'd be the other side of the firewall, the other side of that W. Check out ramcyber.io, which is going to be the landing page for everything going, uh, where everything is going to be going eventually. It's going to be tied in. Check it out now. But eventually you'll start seeing a lot of this stuff uh, be on there uh, as, as the way going forward. But yeah, everybody, look, we enjoyed it. We enjoy you. Keep watching us. Keep taking in the information. If you got any suggestions for us, let us know, right? You can find Ryan out there on all the social medias at Rye Rye Security Guy. Daniel, where can they find you? On LinkedIn under my name, Daniel Acevedo. You, Chris? On LinkedIn under my name, Chris Abacon. Last name spelled A Bacon. All right, everybody. That's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. We enjoy doing it for you. All right. Stay safe. Stay secure. Thank you.